our hearts together in song. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. We may be ever watchful in keeping your ways. We pray through Christ, who reigns with you in the power of the Spirit in us, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, your rebuke to merit you. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, and those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Oh, okay. 
give your strength to your servant. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have all the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and then tie them in bundles for burning and gather the wheat into my barns. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and planted in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parable to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has laid hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house the disciples approached him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, he who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will count his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who have caused others to sin. They will be thrown into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. 
then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. During this long extended COVID experience, I've been doing a lot of reading. And one of the authors that I've read five books on now and probably ordered another five last night is Thomas Keating, a Trappist monk, mystic, and writer. And as you read his writing, one of the themes that keeps popping up that God's greatest desire is to love us. The Lord wants to share his life with us fully. And all that is required of us is to simply consent to his transforming love. He does the rest, all of it. I think we grew up in a spirituality where we thought we needed to earn our way to heaven and that the Eucharist was a reward for good behavior. There's nothing so unlike Christ in those thoughts when we read the scriptures. And that's why Thomas Keating can get to that. He is teaches centering prayer, which is the opening door to contemplation that wordless being with God that reveals the truth beyond what we normally can perceive on our own. So it is God who does the work, does the saving. Ours is simply to consent. And we see that in the parables. We see that in the parable of the seed. The good seed is sown, the presence of God in his people. And then, of course, just like life, there's a mix. Next to us are some bad seeds, or that become weeds who don't respond to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they can bring us down. But we need to learn to live with them, because even we are a mix of both weed and weed. And it's through the patient work of the Holy Spirit that our garden is weeded, that we become holy. Another image I love in today's gospel is the, the woman with the three measures of flour and the yeast. I was thinking maybe that's the first recipe we see in the Bible. I don't know. But anyway, I'm, I'm not going to try it. I, I know it wouldn't work for me. Um, but what's so beautiful about that is the yeast raises that flour into bread. She did the mixing, but God is the yeast that raises it up. The analogy is to our spiritual journey, that we are the weak. The Lord is the yeast that raises us up into the fullness of the Spirit, and it is God's work. And for that work to happen, we need time to commune with God, to sit with Him in Scripture and quiet in prayer. Because in those wordless moments in between our thoughts, something happens beyond our knowing that is more real than we can imagine. And it's the transforming presence of God. And somehow that changes the way we look at things. I might give an example for myself. I'm not sure how valid it is, but this last week there were a couple of things in the news that I found extremely disturbing. One was the young 33-year-old CEO in New York who was dismembered in his apartment. And, you know, there was a picture of him and he seemed like a handsome, full-of-life guy. And I think how horrible and hideous that is. But, you know, then I stepped back from it, and not that he should be dead, but what world was he traveling in? You know, who was this that rode up to, in the elevator to his private apartment? Did he know this person? But in the end, that doesn't matter either. 
because it's a hideous thing about how people, humanity treats other people. But you know, God's not done with that. Maybe in the next life, those two are going to be friends because they're going to reach another level of intimacy. Not possible. So what seems like total division, a duality between good and evil, maybe good's still working. Maybe something will still happen in that situation. I know I pray about it. I try to let it go, give it to God, pray for justice. But I don't know what that justice is. That justice extends beyond this life. Because the spiritual life is forever. The other thing in the news that rubbed me crazy the wrong way was another cathedral in France was burned. And they suspect arson. Uh, which angers me. Another culture. Is that another culture coming in? We don't know. To, to destroy something that is sacred to us. But what do we learn from that? I mean, obviously they're disenfranchised. Obviously they're not respectful. But maybe we learn that the church isn't buildings either. The church is people. That's how we love one another and deal with one another. That unconditional love and presence of God to us is what we learn to live in with others. And so maybe some greater good comes out of that what seems an incredibly horrific event. And so we are in God's plan, not ours. I know my ego likes to get involved. And I like to know what justice is and I want it done, you know. Uh, you know, and we're all like that because we're a mix of a false self and a true self, a loving self and a selfish self. So we all have to slowly let the spirit lead us to, to move beyond our normal ways of insight and thinking of things so that we, we come to a place where there is absolutely no duality. That somehow what seems as opposites become one in God. And only God, the spirit, can take us there. May that spirit live in us. God live in us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was by the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and that his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
we bring to the Lord our petition. Let us pray for the work of the church in the world, for what we need to do as Jesus would do, to serve those who Jesus would serve, to love those that Jesus loves. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who show us the paths to peace and understanding, for those whose job it is to try to protect us from all forms of harm, especially the resurging COVID-19 virus, for those who must gamble with others' lives to make decisions regarding openings and closings, especially of our school systems, for all those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict, we pray. Let us pray for all those for whom we are concerned, for those who are anxious about their health, for those who have lost their homes, livelihoods, hope, those struggling in their marriage, those whose children are hurting, for those for whom we have promised to pray, for Alia Tobin, Father Bob Tucker, Carolyn Mosley, Sarah Blum, Zenaida Luciano, Josephine Zeman, we pray. Let us pray for those who have died, especially for John Briggs, for all who have died in defense of our human and civil rights, especially for freedom fighter and champion John Lewis, for our loved ones who have gone before us and for all who mourn the loss of someone dear to them. We pray especially for both the living and deceased members of the holy name Council of Catholic Women, who we've been asked to remember with this liturgy. We pray. For these prayers and for the prayers, hopes, concerns, and fears that we each may hold in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we bring you our petitions, but above all, we ask that thy will be done. We pray through Christ who reigns with you in the power of the Spirit in us, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, that this our offering may be found pleasing to God, our Almighty Creator. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion the varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants. Make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that which each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the good of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty. Salvation always and everywhere to give thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, Christ our Lord, for after this resurrection, he plainly appeared to his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us shares in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts as we acclaim. Holy. Mm -hmm.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant will be shed for you for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in number me. The mystery of when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one of the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and minister the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our whole word and our archbishop, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse Joseph, the apostles, and all the saints who pleased you through the ages, we may come to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever. present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God who dwells in you continue to bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go now in the love and the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 